All right, uh, this is uh, Moises Acuna Gorola with uh, Latino Americans uh, 500 Years of History Project in uh, Fort Worth. Uh, today is September the 26th. September 26, 2015. Um, and I am with uh, Mrs. Rosa Martinez Gomez. Uh, yes. Thank you for um, you know, taking the time out of your day. Um, so if you may, uh, will you tell us your, your whole name, where you were born, your uh, birthday? I was born in Fort Worth, Texas at 715 uh, West Bluff, <laughs> Fort Worth, Texas. I was raised here in Fort Worth, but of course we went out of, out of state every year when I turned seven. We went to Greeley, Colorado in 1942 to work the fields, and we kept coming back and going back to Wisconsin. We went to Wisconsin most of the time to work. I was raised here. I went to school at East Van Zandt two blocks from here, okay. <laughs> East Van Zandt School. I, I went there till, I, till the fourth grade. And uh, the reason they got me out of that school, my parents got me out of that school, is because at the time if we spoke Spanish in the schools, they would spank us. And Mr. Principal, I remember him, S.T. Willis, gave me five licks for saying something in Spanish in, at school. And I was really bruised, and my father saw me, and he took me to Wisconsin. They, we went off to Wisconsin. And we came back, we kept coming back, but he never put me back in school. Okay, okay. there's already so much there that I want to definitely okay. explore. Okay. Um, did you, uh, birthday? August the 30th, 1934. And what were your parents' names? Uh, Lucia, Rey, Lucia Martinez and uh, Sisto Martinez. Okay. But they were divorced in 1941, so the, the man that raised me was Reyes. That's the one that I called my father. Okay. And where were your parents from? My father was born in uh, Jalisco, San Juan de los Lagos, Jalisco. And my mother was born in uh, El Plateado, Zacatecas. Okay. When did they come over to the U.S.? My father came here when he was 35, and he put a dime in the, in the bridge, and he crossed over and he went to work for the railroad, TP Railroad. And my mother was, uh, her father brought her here to Sierra Blanca, to El Paso, close to El Paso. She, that's where she was raised. He brought her at the age of four years. He stole her and my aunt from my grandmother and came to, to the United States and my grandmother tried to find him but she never could find him. What years uh, was that? That was, well, my mother was, uh, she was born in 1910s, and she was four when she came. She had to be 1914. Okay. And your father, when did he come? He came when he was uh, 35, and he was born in 1897. Okay, so 20... He was 35 when he came here. So, okay, uh, okay, I can't math it, but... Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. so in the 30s sometime? Yeah, in, right? yeah, in the 30s. Okay, um, so, uh, and you said they, uh, he found work at the, at the railroad, right? Railroad. Was he working with other uh, Mexican-Americans? Yes, he was working with uh, Alfonso Jara and uh, I think Pascasio Martinez, which is Pete Martinez now. They, they, they got it on the other uh, as, as Pete Martinez. Well, he worked with all of them, and uh, uh, those are the people that used to go to the house and when we were little, and he, I mean, when I was young, and I could uh, remember them. Mm -hmm. Um, what brought your parents over to the U.S.? Well, my father came to get work. He worked. He came to here to work because they had told him, and he bought a lot of land in Mexico. So he was working here and sending his money to Mexico and bought a lot of land in Mexico. He was very rich, a very rich man in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And when he retired from the railroad, he went back to Mexico. He had a store over there. But we never, I never did go to, to any of that in Mexico. I never would, wanted to go to Mexico. Why is that? I didn't think, I didn't want to do, ever go to Mexico. It was, to me, it was, it was, it looked like on, on the films and movies and stuff that I saw, it was real poor and I didn't want any part of it. Mm. Yeah. Do you, now looking back, do you wish you went? No. no. I have no regrets. And my mother said she would never go to Mexico, not even as a queen. Okay. She would, and she, she didn't. Uh, she, she legally she wasn't here legally, mm -hmm. but after my brother was Manuel Martinez, he joined the. Well, the, he was he was in. Uh, he was they, they were. Uh, 
there was 1945 war. He was uh, taken, called to the induct, well, the way they were inducting him, were, they were putting him in, in, in the Marine Corps. Drafted? Drafted, he was drafted. The draft was running at the time. Okay. And so he was in the Marine Corps, he was a Marine. And they told my mother that since he had served the Marine, in the Marines, she was no longer, she was eligible for, for, oh, for her to, uh -huh, citizenship. So okay. uh, when she died at the age of 46, and uh, she never did go to Mexico, and she never had any plans to go to Mexico. Oh, okay. Um, I guess, so now you're here, uh, we can either talk about neighborhoods or we can talk about the schools you went to. Which do you want to talk about first? Ah, uh, neighborhoods. Okay, so tell us about your neighborhood. So I see El Papalote, I just heard about that. That's where I was raised, in okay, Papalote. Okay, and then uh, Corte, is that right? We lived, at, we lived at La Corte, okay. and I went to the Presbyterian Church. It was, it was known as the First Mexican Presbyterian Church. It used to be on Bluff. And then they change it. Now it's the Gatsimi Presbyterian. And uh, that's where I went. And we had, we went to church there on uh, Sundays and Wednesdays and, and uh, Wednesday evenings. And I did recitaciones, which is recitals now. And I did recitaciones when I was little. And when we, we went to that church every time when we got back from, from the Wisconsin or from, the, from Colorado. We would go back to that church, and we, that's, that was where we, we grew up, in that church. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I was, a, I was uh, when I grew up and I got married, I became a member of St. Patrick's. I've been a member of St. Patrick's. I was a member of St. Patrick's for 63 years. Is that a Presbyterian church? No, it's well? Catholic, St. Okay. Patrick's Catholic Church, downtown on Throckmorton. Okay. And I was helping, I was a teacher's aide there for nine years, uh, teaching uh, catechism. Um, what did the um, the neighborhoods look like when you got there? Oh, they were real poor when we were in. Uh, we lived at the courthouse, and then uh, my my real father rented a home on twenty three nineteen Poplar, mm -hmm. and that was El Papalote. Mm -hmm. So we moved there in nineteen forty one, and we lived there on and off. We stayed there most of the time, and that's when I went to East Vincent. But I went to when I lived at the Corte, I was like six, and I went to Peter Smith Elementary School, which I don't, I don't even know the building exists anymore. It's downtown on Florence, I think it was a street. But, uh, I, well, I was six. I can't remember what streets they were in. <laughs> but anyway, and I went to, then when we moved to Papalote, which was, we, we used to go get groceries on 17th Street. That's where the big stores were at. 17th which now the freeway and uh, that's where that's where I was uh, that's when I went to East Vincent. Okay. Um, the that store was it owned by Mexicanos? Uh, who the store? The store yeah. No it's uh, Griegos. Okay. It was Griegos and they spoke Spanish. Okay and, and there were and then there was a, American? Uh-huh okay. and there was a church that uh, my stepfather was never Presbyterian or anything he was Catholic and all of his children, which were six of them, they were baptized at San Juan Catholic Church on 17th Street. Okay. That was a Catholic church, and that's where he used to go. To, to go. Okay. Um, before we get there, I, I just want to know a little bit more about the neighborhoods. Um, was there paved roads? You said they were really poor, so I mean... They're nothing but dirt roads. Nothing but dirt roads. What dirt about roads. Uh, sewage, water, electricity? Uh, no sewage. There was, uh, we had outer houses in the back. Mm -hmm. And a truck came, I think, once a month and cleaned up the bath, uh, the, the sewage line. Right. But there were no sewage. We had outer houses, and and uh, the we it was real, real. Uh, it was a real poor neighborhood. Was there uh, running water? Yeah, there was running water. Uh -huh. What about gas? No, we had uh, we had uh, wood stoves. Okay. We had a wood stove. My mother cooked in a wood stove, and we had wood uh, heaters. So when it got cold, um, did you buy the wood? Did you have to? Yeah, we bought the wood. Bought the wood. Uh huh. Okay. Um, when did all that start to change? Oh, it changed. It. I, I think it started changing in. Uh, I can't. I can't even recall. I can remember the flood of '49. We still had outer houses. We still had an outer house in 19. Tell, tell me about the flood. I've never heard of that before. 
the 1949 flood? Yeah, I'm not from the area. Oh, okay. So I'm really, oh, I yeah. thought everybody You're knew about the flood. Me about this, oh, I thought just, everybody yeah. knew about the flood. Yeah, no. Well, the, the flood came, and we lived in the higher area, but all of my aunts and uncles lived my, on my stepfather's side. They were all living on the corte, and all that corte and, and Presbyterian church was underwater. And all of the records that we had at the Fort Worth at the Presbyterian church got flooded out, and they were ruined. So I had to do, go and, and tell them something about the people and the families that were attending when I was little, mm -hmm. because they, they, nobody knows, and all the people that were there before me are dead. Mm -hmm. And since and I went to the church and I talked to them and they told me that who was, and I started naming the families, you know, Aguirres and, and all the family was there. Anyway, uh, they, uh, the flood came in and it, all, the, all the river, the Trinity River, it, it was solid. You could see the Montgomery Wards to the second floor covered with water. Wow. It was something to see. And, and, uh, and I, had, I have a picture at home of the flood. I should have brought it. Yeah. But anyway, they, uh, it was in the, in the Star Telegram. Mm. And, uh, and that's, that's when it flooded. And we still had other houses in. Wow. I think they changed in the 50s. That's when they start putting. But we didn't have, at 2319 Poplar, we never had an indoor, indoor bathroom. We never did. Um, and you mentioned 17th Street, right? That doesn't exist. It, there's a it, highway that cuts uh -huh, down. Yeah, 17th Street. Um, and you stayed on 17th? Or? We, we, we lived in, on Poplar. Okay. But on 17th Street, it cut, it was 17th Street. It was like a little, uh, like we, we would call a mall right now. That, that, would, that would be where the stores are, where the bars were, and, and, oh. and the, and the uh, Red Light District and Hell's Acres, that's where it was at. That was all in that area. All where, it's, where the, uh, the railroad is. That used to be a big lot there. That used to be all bars, bars. And, and then they moved them on to Jones Street and Calhoun, the bars. And that's where all the bars going down. That's where, uh, that, that if you, if in the history of Fort Worth, you will see it's Hell's, Hell's, Hell's Acres. It's in the books. And mm -hmm. That that was where it was, mm -hmm. and and I've I've been here for so long that I remember all of this. So that um, this is something we're trying to answer in my previous inter interview. When did they build? The, uh, is it the turnpike that goes cuts over there? When was that built? That was in the sixties, seventies, uh, I think. Seventies. Uh huh. Okay. okay. So seventies. Yes. Okay. Because it might have been the early, the late sixties or the early seventies, because we had. The turnpike, which is a 30 right now, that was where the turnpike was. You get in it on uh, Riverside Drive or, yeah, Riverside Drive, you get into the turnpike and you had to pay right about Long Beach Street or on Oakland, around that area, you paid the toll. And you kept on going, you couldn't exit until you got to Dallas. Hmm. And we didn't have DW Airport either, DFW, we didn't have it, we had anybody they wanted to go to the airport, had to go to Love Field. Dallas, that was right. in Dallas. Uh -huh. okay. I, I drove a cab in 1968. I drove a, a yellow cab. And I used to take the people, they were going to the, to the airport, I took them to, to uh, uh, Love Field. Um, okay, uh, th that's a... Uh I guess back up a little bit. Tell me about uh, schooling. You said whenever you, you spoke Spanish in school, you'd get punished, right? Yes. How many Mexican kids did you go to school with? Uh, there was uh, the, well, there was a lot of kids, a lot of Mexican kids, but okay. we couldn't, none of us could speak English, uh, Spanish. We had to speak oh. English. Okay. Um, and what was school like? Was there an overcrowding of classrooms? What kind of books? Uh, we had, I can remember all my teachers. And we had a real, we didn't have but maybe 20, maybe 24, 25 kids. Okay. And they tried to mix us mostly with whites. They put maybe four, well, it was just like, like the elite. I mean, these were the rich Mexicans. I see. I see. The rich Mexicans, they lived in a better neighborhood. They lived up here on Haiti, which is around this neighborhood. They lived on Haiti. This was all white neighborhood. So, but we lived on the other side of the tracks. And, and that's, that's where, you, you, if you live on the other side of the tracks, you're poor. Mm 
yeah. which was the Papalote. That was our neighborhood. So a lot of kids came from 17th Street, which was uh, the area where, uh, the little area full of houses, and then they tore all of it down and put the projects. Okay. That's when the projects come up over there. Well, anyway, there was a lot of Mexican kids that came. The, it was um, the, the Cantus, the Ramirez, they went to school with me. Uh, the Del Toro, Del Toro, they, they put the two Del Toros with me because they were from rich neighborhood. They were lived off of Tennessee on Hetty. Mm -hmm. And all these rich kids would, they would put those kids, they put maybe four or five Mexicans and the rest of them were all white. Oh, I see. They try to mix us around like that. And that's how they, they did all the schools. Oh. I mean, all the, the grades. Right. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you speak Spanish with one I another, couldn't, uh -huh. no. We were at that, I, when I was caught, we had a round, real round fountain that fed, that was five, for maybe five or six kids could drink water out of that fountain. And we were at recess, and I was working, uh, I was talking to Elvira, but she was my best friend. And she told me something in Spanish, and I answered her. And the patrol girl, Wanda Ball, was the patrol girl. And she said, oh, I caught you, Rosa. I caught you, Rosa. You were talking Spanish. You were, you were talking that Spanish. And she said, you're talking that Mexican. And I said, no, I wasn't. She said, yeah, yes, you were. You're going to see S.T. Willis. So she takes me to S.T. Willis. And he had a gold big cigar. He looked like a bulldog. And he said, OK. And my mother, we wear long dresses. We, we couldn't wear short dresses. We wear long dresses to school. And my mother and, and petticoats. And he made me pick up my clothes. He humiliated me in the worst way. He made me pick up all my clothes and just took my panties. And he just hit me five times. And when I got home, I, I couldn't sit down. I, it hurt to sit down. And my mother said, what's wrong? And I kept saying, I can't sit down. And I couldn't even sit down on the bed. And my mother said, let me see. And she picked up my clothes. And I told her, the principal hit me. And when my dad got home, she told him, my stepfather, he said, okay, we're, we're going to Wisconsin. We're moving to Wisconsin. But then my, my mother, my brother wouldn't go. My oldest brother, Manuel, he was here. And he was, he was already, already uh, old, and he said, I'm not moving to Wisconsin. So we had to come back. But she said, he said, we won't, we're not going to put her in school no more. She's not going to school no more. And I want them to come and tell me why she, and I'll tell them why she's not going to school. So nobody bothered about me not being going to school, so. Yeah. But he did teach me how to speak. He'd teach me how to read in Spanish okay. at home. He would get the prensa, okay. and he would get those La Mantilla, those Mexican books, and he would show me all of that in Spanish. And boy, before you know it, I was reading and writing in Spanish. And he said, he always told my mother, this is a rare, smart, smart girl. And, uh, we really need to give her, get her in school in, in Wisconsin, and we need to keep her over there in Wisconsin. And, and, and because over there, I went to the last two weeks of the school that I went, there was a, a little German girl, there was uh, Hungarians, Italians, and everybody, and everybody spoke their language, and nobody said nothing. Mm -hmm. And there was two Mexicans from uh, West Laco, Texas. They were going to the school too, and I was re I was really happy because we spoke Spanish. The three of us talk, spoke Spanish. And, we were all in the same classroom, but they didn't divide us or anything. They put us all, that we were all for little farms, and they put us all in there, and I was happy with that. From West Laco, do you remember their names? No, I don't, but they were from West Laco, Texas. Okay, yeah. They were in Wisconsin. Wow. They was in, 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 Wapak, in, in Delavan, Wisconsin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you were also working up there too? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, tell me about that. Um, well, we worked, uh, as, as soon as you were seven years old, eight years old, you go to work over there. And it was a good thing. I think that it was a real good thing because I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't do anything like that. And I raise my kids the same way. Mm -hmm. Everybody has chores. As long as you have the kids busy, right now I think that's the worst thing that, that kids are doing. They have too much time on themselves and they got, oh, let's go do this, let's go do that. But we didn't, at the time we didn't. Mm -hmm. I guess it was, was we were poor and we were, to, we were in bed by, 7.30, 8 o'clock, we were in bed at the farm. We were tired. We worked all day, and we went to bed, and by 3 o'clock in the morning, we were up, ready to go back and hit the fields again. Wow. Yeah, we worked. And uh, in Wisconsin, 
it's uh, all starting daylight about 3.30 in the morning, you get daylight, it was getting daylight. And about 9 o'clock, 8, 8.30, it was still daylight at night. So we worked until it daylight. When daylight was gone, we come back home, we took uh, uh, showers in, in, the, in the stalls, and, and we went to bed. So uh, was there a place there for their family to live there on the farm? Yes, uh -huh. there was, they had like a little village. They had about six or seven homes. The, the farm, the, the, the rancher, the big man, mm -hmm. we call him El Ranchero. Mm -hmm. He had five or six houses, little houses, uh, where the families could be there, kitchen, the bedrooms, and uh, maybe two beds. If you had a large family, he put you two bedrooms. If you had a, a, a small family, you had a bedroom and a kitchen in the outer house. There was all out of houses out there. There wasn't no running water. And we, had, we didn't have running water either. We had to pump the water from the wells. Okay. We used the pumps. We, I, me and my brother Frank would always pump the pumps and we'd get the water out. How far away from, uh, from your we house had, was the pump? It was a good distance. We walked a little ways. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and did you, I don't know, uh, drive out there or did you just walk? Or just with we walked you? everywhere. We walked uh, two and a half miles to go get the, the, the milk because we had little younger brothers and sisters that drink milk. And we would walk about two and a half miles, five miles back and forth. Uh, it was me and Frank, myself and Frank. We used to walk to and from to get the milk. And we brought the big, big, like, not uh, maybe the jugs, the big jugs. Mm -hmm. We had a little wagon, we pulled it, and we brought the wagon, we put it with, with milk. So when did you come back to Fort Worth? Well, we, well, you went to Colorado, right? We went to Colorado. We went to Greeley, Colorado, and uh, we stayed there uh, nine months, and we came back. And then we, that's when we were living at the Corte, at the courthouse, the, the Barrio de la Corte. We lived there, and then uh, we, were, we went back over there. We lived at uh, four or nine mills, and then we moved to 966 Valley, and that's when the, the, the rain started coming, and it moved the house, our house, it moved it. It had the blocks underneath, wow. and it moved the house. And one day we were eating at lunchtime, and the house just came tumbling down, and with all, all us kids in there. And the neighbors rushed, and there was a, a man that had a, a truck, a dumping truck service, Andres Mendoza. Mm -hmm. And he came, and he was real smart. He, he got one of his, his uh, tractors, those like like they, those little they look like, like little, little like, tri up. like tricycles. They look like tricycles. <laughs> they had big and too big on the side. He had well anyway. He had a truck and two trucks, and he talks. He was truck and firm. That was truck and firm. Anyway, he went and got that and pull uh, put that tractor in there and got us out through the windows, and we all got out of there. Was anyone hurt? No, no. By the grace of God, we weren't hurt. Wow. But the roof slide, I'll remember it. The roof slide down, this was in 1940, 40, let's see. She was born in 44. It was three months before my sister that was born in, in, because the rains were coming. It was July, July, she was born in July. It was July, June, May. It was about May. Forty-four. Forty-four. Oh, was that a different? It was in the corte. Uh, was that a different flood from the forty-nine one? It was a different one, huh? Oh, okay. okay. But but that that was, it wasn't the oh no the, we weren't there in the forty-nine ers anymore. Okay. We lived on Poplar Street by I that see. time in forty-nine. That was in forty-four when that that uh, the the house and our house was the only one that, that went down because it had longer. It was like in stilts. It was mm -hmm. like up there in the high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, and you mentioned a number of churches, um, and also a number of schools, um, but let's go to the churches first. Okay. Uh, tell me about the churches you, you attended. I attended uh, Presbyterian Church until I was about uh, 11. And then we went to, we, uh, then I started sneaking off to St. Patrick's, because there was, there was a rich, rich uh, church. There was no Mexicans, no blacks in that church, just white people. So I would go, I would go, we would go real early, Frank, my brother, and I would go, we would go to look for, uh, uh, at the time, there was, uh, the people were real poor. We, they couldn't afford to buy us uh, 
we'd bought fruit in, in Wisconsin, but here in Texas we couldn't buy anything like that. So we used to go to Jones Street where there was a lot of markets, the, the food, uh, uh, vegetables and, and um, uh, fruit and vegetables with markets all on Jones Street, lined up all on Jones Street. And the people would, if they were had a little bruise on an apple or a, or a banana, they put in the trash can. A little anything, any bruise, bruise watermelons, they put them in the trash can. So my my brother and I, we had a wheelbarrow mm -hmm. that he made, and we went down there at about five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. We go down there Before and we hit the, we hit the we hit those those buckets uh -huh. we pulled up he pulled them over and i would get all the fruit and stuff out of there put them in the bucket and then we'd go and then when we got them home my mother would wash them clean them and take the part that was rotted and and and, and gave it to the rest of the kids mm -hmm. that's how yeah. yeah and this was on you said like so during church like during uh, the church and then and then i would i would tell him you know i would make sure that i would ha have something like a a, a, a clean skirt and I would have the blouse, but I wouldn't get it dirty, but I would put on a clean skirt, and I would walk up the street when we were up there, like, or like what now is the, now I would say it's like the, um, the 9th Street. They, they were all, all the way lined up till about, about maybe the, where the bus is, that, no, that's where all the markets were lined. Okay. They had all fruit, and it was different line, different, they had like little, little stands, everybody had their own little space. Oh, where they had, you know, they had little cubics, like little stands like that. They when this one had, this one had, this went all the way till till they got always to the, the bus way. to the what now the bus station. But it was on the other side, not on the bus station side. And and then I would go from there to Ninth Street, cut across, and come back by the by the library. There was a library, and then there was a, the the where the, now is it's where the police station is. That used to be the jail department. The police were there. All the police squad cars were there. They where they put people in jail. Then across the street from there was St. Patrick's. So I'd cut across through there, and I would go and sneak to the side of the pews. And there was a, a, a pew, a, the last pew, there was hardly anybody sit there. I think it was like for, for confession and all that. Mm -hmm. So I used to sneak there and sit there and, and, and pray. And then I would get out of there before everybody started getting out. There's rich, rich people, real rich. And, and all white. Yeah. Did anybody ever uh, tell you anything for being there? No, I know I never got noticed. I guess I was yeah. tiny. I sneak in and I sneak yeah. out, and nobody noticed. Yeah. And then I, I was when I told my my stepfather, I told him I don't want to go to the Presbyterian Church because I don't like it. I like the Catholic Church. He said, Well, you don't have to go to that Presbyterian Church anymore. You can go to San Juan. So I, he told my mother to start letting me to go to San Juan. Cause he didn't want me sneaking to St. Patrick's. He said, "You don't, you don't go over there because they might put you in jail." He mm -hmm. said, "They might, if the whites pe catch you in there, they're gonna put you in jail." And he warned me. He said, "Don't go St. Patrick's no more." And that, you know, it, it, it was really funny because I told uh, Carol Weaver, which was the director of there, I said, "Do you remember that? You don't remember this?" I said, "Because you're too young." And I said, "But Carol, uh, this church, I would give anything to be a member of this, and now I'm a member of it." And I got out of it. Mm -hmm. After 63 years, I just left the church. Because we, we raised four million, four million dollars for that church when all that pedophile start, start stuff coming out. Uh -huh. And when it did, all of our money, they took, they sent it to Dallas to that, that guy and that he had to pay all the people. The four million that we raised here for our air condition mm -hmm. and everything. We used to have spaghetti dinners. We used to have enchilada dinners and, fit and, and, and raise money for the church. We used to go to the offices and people would give us a check for 10000 check for 3000 and and bring it back and give it to them and they deposited. We raised, mm -hmm. we raised $4 million. And they told us, we're thankful, we're glad that y'all raised all this money. Mm -hmm. But you know what, it turned them, they gave it to those, that guy that, that, that uh, in Dallas, mm -hmm. They had raped all that or abused those boys. Mm -hmm. And when they gave that money to them, I said, that's it. That's when I, I said, I'm not having no part of this church no more. Yeah. I'm done with it. And uh, that's, that was, that I'll, I would don't ever go to St. Patrick's no more. I just don't like that church. I go to St. Timothy's. Here's, here's my little, there it is, St. Timothy's. <laughs> that's where I'm at, I'm at church now. Yeah. And how long have you been there now? 
I've been there, uh, I started this year, but I was at, uh, I haven't been a member, now I'm a being a member here. I used to go to St. John the Apostle on Glenview Drive, because my, the youngest, I raised six of my mother's children, the ones that, uh, the, the races, I raised all of them, because my mother, my stepfather was 42 when he was killed in an accident, ditch caved in on him and killed him. And during work? At work, uh-huh, on was Park Row, on East Park Row in Arlington, he was, uh, uh, he was, that year we didn't go to Wisconsin. That was in 50, the last year we went to Wisconsin was 51, no, 50, 52. In 53, we were supposed to go back to Wisconsin. I was 19. I was, uh, and he didn't go, we didn't go back to Wisconsin because his sister was sick. And so we didn't go back, back to Wisconsin and he went to work in construction and a ditch caved in on him up here in Arlington and, and killed him. Wow. He was down on the bottom, and he was stretching the, the jacks, and the, the uh, uh, dirt just came in on him and killed him. And, uh, and uh, he, was, he was, my baby sister was three, eight months old, and she was born in 53. And, and my, my, uh, my brothers and sisters were all, all kids, minors. And, uh, when he was killed, my mother lost her will to live. And she had that little girl and she was, she was three when my mother died. She died in 58, he died in 54 and she died in 58 and she left me all these kids. I was 24 years old. She left me six kids to raise. And I was appointed by the courts. My, uh, Judge Simpson, Marvin Simpson appointed me to be their guardian. And uh, that's when I, I raised all of them. And uh, that, that baby sister of mine, that's, she became a policeman. And the other, the, none of those kids, now I raised them where we, had, we, we, were, we weren't proud, but we couldn't be asking anybody for help. We did our own, we did, we worked, we, and I, they went to church, and I don't want to hear none of this that, oh well, I took to drugs because but, but I don't have no parents. That's BS, that's, that's all because a person has to be a person. I was, With other people. <laughs> you got to, you got to uh, uh, show other people that you got to, they got to do what's right. And I raised these kids that way. And I said, we're going to be, we're going to go to church every Sunday and we're going to make the best of everything we got and we're going to go to work and we're going to be, and they're all productive citizens. Mm -hmm. Josephine was a teacher I raised her, she was 12 when my mother died. And, uh, and she was, and, and my brother Reuben, he was, he was six. And my baby sister was three. And uh, they all were there in their teenage. And my older sister was uh, 16. And she went on to be, um, she worked at the Pentagon. She stayed at the Pentagon until she retired. She was in the, she couldn't, she can't even, this, this, she can't disclose any of the... Right. Uh, when did um, you uh, become their legal guardian? When I was 24 years 60, old. In, in, in 50, 59. 58. 58. I was 24 and 58. Um, so, I, I guess you will have two perspectives for this next question I'm going to ask. Okay. Um, one from yours and then one from yours, I guess, you know, being a parent, essentially. Yes, uh-huh. Oh, uh, the neighborhoods. Were there ever a conflict between the kids in the neighborhoods? If one group of kids would go to another neighborhood, or back and forth, anything like that? Not, not in, in not word gangs. No, no. This is what we did. Okay. This is what I've always done. We kept ourselves to the to the the east side, the TP, and all of that. They 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 didn't have anything. It was the north side and the west side that had gangs all the time oh, fighting each other and my kids my brothers and sisters never attended any gangs my children i have five boys and two girls mm -hmm. of my own they never belonged to any gangs was there ever a problem of that though like did you ever see that i didn't have a problem like because i told my kids first of all you take your kids if they go to church every sunday and they, they don't have they don't have to be looking for gangs I guess better get the question it, I'm asking was there was there was that environment there? 
It, it's, it's always it been there. there. It okay. was there. And even when, when you were a kid too, though? If, if when my brothers and sisters were little, there was always the, the, the west side against oh. the north side, the TP against the, the north side. I never lived in the north side. Okay. I, I avoided the north side like the plague. I would never move to the north side. Why? I stayed on the east side all the time. Oh, why did you avoid the north side? Because it had all these uh, drunks and troubles, and, and there were drugs at the time. There was, and we did not cater to any of that. I see. I see. We stayed on the east side, mm. on, on the east side, and we went to uh, the kids, my kids went to William James, William James Middle School. My, all, my kids, they went to Poly High School, football players and everything. One was, a, uh, my, my oldest son, he's a, he was a, a magnet student all through school. If he hadn't graduated as a magnet, he would have been the valedictorian of Poly High School. He's got a very successful young, uh, young man. He's, in his, he's 47 right now. But anyway, they all went to, to, to that, this, this school's over here. I never, my kids never attended any, they were never in any kind of gangs. So I didn't want them in gangs. When you were young, so you were born in 34, um, so I guess you would have been maybe too young, but were there ever any zoot suitors? Do you remember pachucos when you were Oh, yeah, 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 there was a lot of pachucos, yeah. It's yeah. the same thing. Mm -hmm. the, the, it was the north side always causing trouble to the, to the rest of the neighborhoods. The north side had all the bullies. Really? And we never did. My, my parents did never went to the north side at all. Okay. We stayed, we bought groceries at Bill at, 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 at Safeway, and we, 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 take, we, we stayed on the, there was mostly white people. Mm -hmm. Where we lived on the east side, there was mostly white. I see. They turned black. All this neighborhood on the, on the east side turned it black when they started segregating in the 60s. That's when that, this neighborhood, this were all white people. All oh, white see, people. See. Morningside was all white. Okay. All, it was this all white neighborhoods. And Polly, Polly, Polly was all white. Now it's a majority of black Oh yeah, from, right. and now they're turning all Mexicans. <laughs> and all, all gangs. Okay. And I, I, I'm glad that my, my grandkids are, are on the south side. My great grandkids. I have great grandkids were there. there. So like in Corte and Papalote, were there zoot suitors there too? Pachucos. Uh, there were pachucos, but they didn't. They didn't fight. The, like the TP, the the east side, and the south side. They were. They they got along. They got along. These neighborhoods got along. Mm -hmm. The the fundición, which is called the fundición, el papalote, uh, uh, el el TP. They call it the TP. Mm -hmm. Well, see, my brother Manuel married a girl from TP from the west side. He's from the east side. He married a girl from the west side. And, and uh, my other brother, well, he married a girl from the 17, was it the same popular, the uh, papalote. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're, they're, uh, they weren't any, any conflict. Now, if the north side came, there would be problems. Even at the dances, at the dance, dance land. Were you ever at one of those parties? I was at the dance land. I was at the dance land. My mother used to take me to the dance land when I was in my 14, 15 years old. She'd take me to the dance land. And, and uh, they would, we would go like only on Christmas or Easter. But we didn't go like, oh, every, no. Right. And then we, this was in the winter time because we were in Wisconsin at the time. And over there, we didn't have none of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was just farms and just, <clears throat> just family. Because I remember, um, I looked through some old newspapers one time um, and I saw an, an Associated Press article. I think it was either Fort Worth or Dallas. It was in 1954 um, and um, they talked a little bit about pachucos and you know the zoot suitors. That, they had they had you know, pachucos. They had pachucos. I, I, I wish I knew more details. I can. They had a lot of pachucos in in forty one. Mm -hmm. Forty one. Oh, there, there was big baggy pants and 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 hanging all the way here, and uh, oh. What did your parents think of that? And big old hats the with a feather long. on this long, yeah. yeah, and chains hanging here. <laughs> They look ridiculous, but that's and and no, my father didn't go for that. My father no. What, no. Did he have any, any opinions about that? Well, no, he just he just say those people are you just stay away from them and that's it. And we did, yeah. we did, we didn't associate yeah. with this this kind of people. Yeah. It, I think really, I think my parents isolated us from a lot of things that were going on in the world, and I think I isolated my children to the same way because I kept telling them, you know. I was raised this way, and I kind of raised my kids the way I was raised, and 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 this is this is what where I think really the family values come in. Mm -hmm. 
because if you're a parent that you don't care where your kid is, well, I don't know half of the time where he's at. Well, heck, he's going to go into join a gang or be stealing or doing something, but you're there. Well, what do you need? You know, you cover their needs. I mean, you're poor. Don't, you know, I don't have thousands of dollars. I was poor. Yeah. I, I put yeah. myself through college myself. I put yeah. through those ATI or uh, uh, ATI, yeah. I graduated from there from medical school. I became a, a medical a, 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 a medical student there. I, uh, um, before we go on, I didn't set the timer. Do you know about how long we're in? We're about 35 minutes in. Okay, so we started, okay, 11.30 then? I, I just, sorry, I just want to make sure that, you know, because um, I do want to talk a little bit about that, about after, um, I guess, you know, from the 70s onward. Um, before then, though, can, do you remember any uh, leaders, um, any community leaders, um, either growing up or in your um, early adulthood? Well, uh, my my brother and my sister-in-law were uh, were with PASO organization. Oh, tell they me were about PASO that. organization, okay. and they were with the GI Forum. And at 18, I became one of the GI Forum. I joined the GI Forum because they told me to join it. And they told me to go and vote, and they told me to be a, a good uh, polit in, stay in politics, be a good Democrat, and I've been a Democrat since. Did you ever meet uh, Hector P. Garcia? Who? Hector P. Garcia? No, I met Gilbert. Okay, tell me about him. Gilbert, he was a good man, he a real good man. He, he used to be at our meetings, and he was real active in everything we did. And my brother, my sister-in-law was the one that was really in PASA organization. And I went to boycott the Safeway stores, with my sister-in-law and all that, because of Cesar Chavez, they weren't giving the people a fair share, share of their grapes, mm -hmm. and we boycotted Safeway. Tell we boycotted them. That. We boycotted them so bad they had to leave the the, the state. I think. Yeah. So they left. They um, left. So you. So this was through the GI form or through the, through the GI and Paso organization. Okay. So yeah. We them. we were working with Cesar Cesar. Cesar, Cesar Chavez. Right. So, uh -huh. um, and I, I, I saw him from afar, but I never talked to him. I knew what he looked like and everything, right. but I never went and say hello to him or something like that. No. So, what kind of work went into that? Like, how did that all start? When did you first hear about boycotting, uh, doing the great? Uh, well, my sister in law was into Paso. She was the vice president of Paso organization, name? Pauline Martinez. Pauline Martinez. And she was from the TP, from, she was from that neighborhood, okay. uh, the TP, the West Side. And, and she was uh, into politics, and she was. Uh, she got invited to the White House for uh, the uh, inauguration of uh, uh, John F. Kennedy, but she got sick and she couldn't make it. But she got a, 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 a thing. And see, my brother here, my brother Manuel, was, this is, this is when, when all this, when this was happening. He don't have the year because he, he, didn't, he didn't put it. But this is the year when there were, uh, this, this guy was commissioned to, uh, uh, to uh, Vincent, was commissioned. The, they they invited my brother, oh. and my brother went. That's when my brother went to, uh, to to the to the White House. To the White House, and here's his picture of him and Lyndon oh. B. Johnson. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, we do have an archivist on site who would like to. Yeah, these are digitize all digitize all of these. And and, and uh, this is where uh, Congressman Jim Wright. He was our personal friend. He went to our funerals. Oh wow! Yeah, he was our. our our, now him, I did shake hands with him, and he mm. knew me. He called me Becky, because they called me Becky. That was a nickname, and they called me Becky. And he said, "Hi, Becky." He would say, he would see me, and and, and he was he's now him and he. I I, I knew him. Yeah. I knew him real good. So now this opens up a whole new, <laughs> yeah, a whole new chapter that I want to explore. Yeah, um, uh -huh. this is this is stuff that that was that was. Uh, it, this is 1987 when he's with Congressman Jim Wright. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's already dead. He died mm -hmm. at 78. I'm the only one that, I, that has lived at eight, to be 81. He died at 78. My, my sister older than me died at 79. And my other sister died at 15, the oldest one. Mm -hmm. So that left me. I'm the fourth one in line. And I'm, I'm the only one. And, and I told my brother, good living and good, good, good living, no smoking, and, and uh, going to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. You will see 81, 80 like me. And he started laughing. He said, I doubt it. He said, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've not been feeling too good. I said, okay. <laughs> He's, me, did, he, you, did you know Sam Garcia? Uh, Sam? Sam Garcia, yeah. No, I knew Sam, uh, Sam Pantoja. Mm -hmm, no, no, I didn't did know Sam Garcia. But uh, Gilbert, I knew though, Gilbert, I knew Gilbert, Gilbert Garcia, uh, Gilbert Garcia. Um, okay, 
so you joined uh, the GI Forum. I was 18. You were 18, mm. so what year would have been? Oh. Uh, 43? No, it'd be 54. 50. I mean 54, I'm sorry. Mm. 54. 54, I was 20. So 52. 52. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so. They used to give us pins. Right. And um, when you were in the GI form, you go to Texas Electric on the corner of 7th and Lamar, I think that's what it was. They gave you a little doll, a little, a little what, the little, little dot, the mm -hmm. little what in red, and you pin, they pinned it on you if you had, if you had the GI form until. Oh. They were working with Texas Electric, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I, okay, I, uh, there's a lot here, uh, especially with Basso and GI form. So what was the first issue that you recall? Um, like the, when you joined GA Forum, what was the first thing that you remember, like being actively? Up we were, we were, we would get people involved in voting, mm -hmm. and we would get the younger kids to join and and be active in government mm -hmm. and and stuff like that, and learning and staying in school, and all of that. Because I really did love school, but like I said, I was unfortunate not to have somebody. I mean, that understood it. Because my mother, if it was up to my mother, I, that's why I make these girls go to school and graduate. Because my mother was this way. She said, Mexican people are always going to be maids. There will always be uh, maids to the white people. You're not ever going to get, I don't care how educated you are, you'll never amount to nothing. And she was wrong. Because my sister, Josie, she was a teacher at Poly High School. She was a ninth grade teacher. And my other sister, she was a policeman. Isabel, my baby sister that I raised from three years old, she was a policeman. And my other sister that I raised, she went on to work at the Pentagon. She just retired from the Pentagon. So they are very successful people. None of those kids have ever, ever gone for welfare or help me hands out, never. Because this is what my father was a real proud Indian. Now my stepfather, my stepfather was a proud Indian. My father was from Mexico, but my stepfather was from Alpine, Texas the father of these six, six children. He was from Alpine, Texas. He was an Indian. And he used to tell me, don't ever ask for help. Don't ever beg for anybody to help you. You do the best you can. If you don't have anything to eat, don't eat. He's, he used to be stern like that. He used to tell me, you go to work. Mm -hmm. People that sit down and do nothing are, not, are worthless. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason, I guess, uh, if, uh, if it hadn't been for him, I'd probably be homeless or probably be a junkie or something, but I didn't have, I, I mean, I was my own, my, my own father and mother when I was 24, and that's when you really need somebody to back you up. Well, I was backing up all my baby, my br brothers and sisters, so I didn't have time for nobody to pamper me. Yeah. And, um, and uh, trying to get them to be productive citizens, and they were all productive citizens. Yeah. All my kids and all my, my, my grandkids, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I, I want to talk more, you said, um, Oh, and, and by the way, registration drives and poll tax drives. Uh -huh. Were there ever and like like dances and stuff? To yeah, raise we money? we had dances too. That that, but uh, we were. I didn't get to be active in that because my parents. Uh, what I, I I wasn't really able to be out on my own until I was nineteen. Mm -hmm. And and they still, my mother still took me to the took me to the dances. I was, I, I wasn't allowed to go out dating and all like like the, the young girls do nowadays and. They go and start dating at 14, 15. I didn't. No, no, no. At that time, I was, I was just, no. But with the GI form, though. Uh, with the GI organized, form. Uh, dances, uh, organized dances. Organized dances, but I didn't, I didn't attend them. I just went with the girls along, and the, my mother was there. My mother was always at, at any farm we went to. Okay. Um, and I guess the same would go for like voter registration drives. Do you ever recall um, going to a neighborhood, going door to door? Uh, me and Pauline, did, Pauline, Pauline, my sister-in-law, we went. She took me, and uh, she took my other sister. We, we went uh, to, but my other sister, Gloria, she wasn't involved. She was too shy, and she didn't want to talk to people, and she's, she's two years older than me, but she's dead already. She died two years ago. She didn't so make it to what neighborhood to, would y'all go to? And we went to, mostly, we went to the north side. She had mostly north side people, and that's where the GI form was at, north side. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. So there wasn't two chapters, it was just the one in the north uh, the side? The one in the north side, uh -huh. okay. that's what the, the only chapter that we went to. It. And uh, Gilbert Garcia, if I remember, he owned the cleaners at the time. He was the owner of a cleaners. And he had a lot of clientele there going, and he, that's where he, he would work his, his, he worked it out of his store. 
Okay. Yeah, he had a cleaners. Okay. And one, one on, it was on 21st, I think. His cleaners was over there. Okay. If I can remember correctly. Um, and, and Josie went on to be, Josephine, my sister that was, was 12, she went on to be uh, in, uh, she was a secretary for Lon Burnham. She's been, a, she worked for Fort Worth ISD and then she went on to, when she retired from Fort Worth ISD, she went to work for Lon Burnham until he, he was uh, retired now. And she's one that also was in Paso or no? No, she's, but she's involved in politics. Okay. She's right now, she's with the with Hispanic uh, something, she's something, she's something in, 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 in uh, uh, is she in the area still? You're oh yeah, yeah. She's working. That she's active in oh, okay. in politics. Okay. She's active, very active in politics. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about other groups? Uh, do you remember, like, uh, say, the Brown Berets? Uh, do you remember uh, Mayo Mexican American Youth Organization? I mean, this would have been in the later '60s. Uh, yeah, the, I remember those, but we we weren't active in those because by that time, Pauline got sick and they started sla slacking off. And we all, and then my mother got sick. That was in the 58, 58. From 58 on down, and Pauline, Pauline was, uh, she wasn't, I think she died in 85, I think. 80, 85 she died. But she had been, she had uh, uh, something wrong with her liver. So she developed uh, some, uh, like hepatitis and stuff. And she was always she was always real weak, but she worked from the house, and and we were but we weren't as active. And I remember Congressman Jim Wright going out there to the house and getting stuff from her house and everything. I remember him going in and out of there. That's why he went to her her, her funeral. He went to her funerals. So okay, um, so I guess when as she started getting sick, it just kind of yeah. So she was like the driving force. Yeah, she was the driving force. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, and also, and this is with GI Foreman with Paso, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you. By, I guess by the late sixties, um, with the Brown Berets and stuff. Yeah. You probably wouldn't have crossed paths. Uh, no, I couldn't. I, I, did, I couldn't say anything about them, but I remember Paso. Paso, she was from that that organization for a long time, and they were real active. And like I said, they got they got all this. Uh, they went they went to the White House, and uh, and that's they brought up that. That uh, the 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 one that they they were real active in was uh, the my my nephew, their ch their son, their oldest son, Andrew Martinez. He was a patrol boy. He was crossing the kids from the bus. They they were on on, Mac on McCurdy. He was crossing the street up there on on the, the street, and a lady came from around the bus and hit him right smack in the middle of the street and killed him. Oh. He he got uh, the ambulance picked him up. And I went to the hospital with him, and uh, because the Pauline was out, I don't know where she was at, and uh, and Manuel was working, and so the neighbor called me. Martha called me and said, uh, "Can you come to the? Uh, uh, we just had an accident, and I had Frank, my brother, drive me over there to the house, and the ambulance was picking him up, and I drove in the ambulance with him, and he, Frank, went to the body shop to tell Manuel he, we were at St. Joseph Hospital, and he was barely." breathing when, when I was with him in the ambulance and they didn't have those oxygen things or nothing at that. You just pick up the body and took him to the, to the hospital. And, uh, and the doctor told me to get out of the hospital, out of, the, out of there in the emergency room and they were working on him. And, uh, but that's when Pauline and Manuel got active and went again to the White House. And they wanted, Congressman Jim Wright fought for that bill. They wanted to get the people, the bus, the people to stop Put a when they're unloading children to put mm -hmm. to put the red lights on, mm -hmm. and you can't cross the bus. And that's when they did that. Oh, Th that's okay. when they bought that law. They made into law that it was not they were not you're you're not to pass the red light right. when the bus is unloading or loading children. They were the ones that active in that. Wow. Manuel and Pauline Martinez were active in that because of the of uh, uh, Wimpy. We call him Wimpy. Wimpy got killed right there. That's that's he got killed in a car. He was a patrol boy, and the car came around. That he was he was in Fort, Worth? in Fort Worth on 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 Avenue J, okay. on Avenue J. He was, it, it was McCurdy was over here, and he was alone. The kids were going to McCurdy and to the other streets. He was alone across the street. Mm -hmm. Avenue J was pretty busy, okay. and he put he put up his little hand, and he was a patrol boy. He had a little patrol boy thing, and he, he they crossed him. And, and, and when they did, the lady came around from, the, she couldn't wait, and she came around like this and just 
hit him, yeah. smack hit him on. Oh. Yeah, he died. What year was that? 58. 58. Okay. Before that, you could pass the buses. He didn't buy, buy but they made it into law. Wow. They put it into law, and, it, and now you don't pass a red light, a, a bus. Mm -hmm. flip, that's, that's, that's what they went and did. Congressman Jim Wright helped them with that. Mm -hmm. I remember that correctly. Um, I think we're like at, I guess, 50 minutes, right? Um, I'm not, I, because here's the thing, I, I know that we can go a lot more, um, but the thing is, I don't know who's waiting, do we have anybody waiting? I don't. Um, or if we, if there's somebody oh. in line after you, um, okay. because I would like to talk more about the jet forum and about, you know, Faso and... Uh, the neighborhoods and, and, and your schooling, you know, because we only got to talk up to about 1970s-ish, uh -huh. you know. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk a little bit more beyond that. Um, can you just pull up on the video? Or yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, want me to ask if anyone's waiting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you ask Max to see if we have anyone in line waiting? Um, until he gets back, um, is there anything you want to talk about? Because um, I didn't, like, first off, like, I didn't know something like, like the flood, the 1949 flood. I didn't know about that. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, so is there any big moment like that? Any big, like, something that affected the neighborhood that you can recall? No, uh, no. I recall when JFK came to Fort Worth and we were, we were there. Oh. We were there at the, at the Hotel Texas and it was raining and we were out in the, in the rain and uh, Pauline was there, I think. Yeah, Pauline was there. Pauline was there and we, uh, we were waiting for JFK to come out, and we were all in that platform. He was in the platform across on the parking lot of the of the Texas Hotel, and we were all standing there, and and greet him when he came out. And it was misting, it was raining, and we were all getting wet, but we didn't care. Hmm. We were, we were sitting, uh, do, you, do you recall the Viva Kennedy campaigns? Was was that happening in? Hollywood? Yes, uh -huh. I have the Viva Kennedy uh, pen. Oh, you do. I have it at, at home. Yes. Wow. Uh, yeah, he said that there are hundreds. So. There, are, there's a line still. Well, like not a line, but like there are a he, did, he said there are other people. So. Okay, um, so let's talk about the Viva Kennedy campaign um, before we, we wrap up. How were you involved with that? Uh, we we just we had uh, uh, we took the told the people to go and vote, and we were at we were just getting all the people together, and uh, we had meetings at at the at the at, at the houses. We didn't have a campaign headquarters like they do nowadays. Mm -hmm. We had we got there together in a house. Like tonight, we're going to gather here at at at, uh, at uh, uh, six hundred nine McCurdy, or you know, at, uh, stuff. And we would do that, and and we would gather at at her, at, at their house in 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 the yard, mm -hmm. and everybody would have like they have sandwiches or have uh, you know uh, hot dogs and stuff, and all the people get together, and that's when we all all of them are are, are going to go vote for, for Kennedy, for, for JFK and all that. Do you recall voter registration drives for that too? Going oh yeah, yeah, we had all, a lot of those. Pauline had a lot of those, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, and what about the day of the election? Do you recall any carpooling, giving people rides out to the polls? No, 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 they didn't have that then. Because most of the time it was, it was done at the schools. Okay. Most of the time, it, was, it wasn't done like that nowadays that they do it at, at the place. Most of the time the, the, the voting was taking place at the schools. So it wasn't a, a real hassle to get No, it wasn't there. because everybody went to school when you were the, the, their school. Everybody had their own school where they went to vote. Okay. Nowadays, I mean, they just complicated the whole thing all over. Yeah. I, I was, I was, in, I was in, in, in turmoil. They send me to, because I'm, I'm still working the polls. I work the polls every election. I don't care if it's just a minor election. I work the polls. And uh, I'm going to work in November. Anyway, they get all this. And I call the people, and I'm in the banks. I'm active, I'm, I'm active in, I get into the banks. They call me, this politician wants me to go and do the bank for him. Okay, I'm, phone banks, I'm, I'm in the phone banks with him. And, and for council and for mayors and for whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I get into that. I'm, I'm working those. I wish we could talk to you more. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. it, was, uh, it was really great. Um, I learned a lot. It, you, I, as you can see, I was just writing notes the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we have to wrap up. Um, okay. And we do have an archivist on site. Um, they would like to probably scan that, get some release forms, and that sort of thing. Um, I believe you might have signed this already. I already signed it. Yeah, so that, now it's my turn to sign. Um, thank you so much. Um, I hope we um, talk again.
um, because there's a lot more I'm going to go into detail. Okay. With. Okay. Um, so thank you. Is there anything you wanted to say right before we wrap up? Well, all I can say is that uh, I just hope that everybody votes. I don't care how they vote, but as long as they vote, they vote. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very important thing, and it's one privilege that nobody can take away from us. Yeah. Black, white, or otherwise. Yeah. They can't take that privilege. And if my parents had stood up for me, I probably would be a lawyer right now instead of being a poor nothing. <laughs> I want to say a poor nothing. You were a, a they mentor. Were, uh, I mean, they, they should have sent me to uh, uh, Wisconsin. They should have kept me in Wisconsin, you know, let my brother go and send me to Wisconsin to the schools over there. I could probably be a lawyer, but, well... It just didn't turn out that way. But I don't think I turned out so bad after all, because I raised all, his, all their kids, and, and they're all successful, productive citizens. They all have their own homes, and hey, they, nobody ever did know that they didn't have a father or mother. Mm -hmm. they, they never thought they were orphans. Yeah. My baby sister, her teacher, told her when she was graduating, she said, why come your mother and father not here for graduation? She said, there is my mother and father. I was standing there, and she said, that's your sister. She said. That's my mother and father. My fa I haven't had parents since I was three years old. I was eight months old when my father passed away, and I was three when my mother died. She said, oh, my God, Isabel, you never had a father and a mother? She said, nope. And she became a policeman, wow. Fort Worth Police. Thank you. Um, can we take the mic?